This is part four of a series of short takes on what's come to be called progressive Christianity, but which is, in fact, as I've been saying through these episodes so far, it's just a reheated version of the theological liberalism that beset the church in the late 18th and 19th centuries. I'm responding here to a blog post by a self-professed progressive Christian titled, I'm sorry, conservative Christianity, I just can't do it anymore. The author lists the problems that he has with what he calls conservative Christianity. I would encourage you, if you didn't uh, listen to episode one, do that because it sets some important context. Now, we've considered five objections so far. Here's a sixth. He says, I can't turn off my brain, deny my individuality, and freeze dry my beliefs. Now, surely the author realizes how incredibly condescending and insulting that is. It implies that those who disagree with his progressivism aren't just intellectually inferior, they're also mindlessly following whatever their leaders tell them. He more than implies that when he writes this, quote, God gave me a brain with common sense and a conscience. I'm convinced that God's desire isn't that I land in a cold existence of conformity to a certain set of approved beliefs, but that I'm always growing in my awakening to his grace, forever fluid to where that might take me emotionally, spiritually, physically, and confessionally, unquote. Note that last word, confessionally. If the word means anything, which is probably doubtful since in progressivism, words have no settled meaning, but let's assume that the author means the word confessionally by its traditional definition, which is the creeds and confessions that have come to define the historic Christian faith. Yet he wants to assign a fluidity to his confession as he processes his spiritual journey. But his positions on several issues raised in his article reveal a categorical rejection of classic Orthodox faith that can make a claim at a genuine historical Christianity. For goodness sake, he's just eschewed such, quote, conformity to a certain set of approved beliefs, unquote. Yet by embracing progressivism, he's simply thrown over one set of approved beliefs for another equally approved set of beliefs, this time by his progressive cohorts. In another remark reeking of condescension, he says this, Jesus created me as a complicated, unique, divinely loaded individual that should resist all human-born labels that would seek to limit, control, own, cage, or define me. Where conservative Christianity largely desires to assimilate and mold me, I just want to live my life enjoying the freedom of which Jesus freed me. Once again, the characterization of conservative Christianity as coercive and controlling. The author was either a former member of a pseudo-Christian cult or he's maligning an imaginary enemy. I embrace the label conservative Christian as a proper designation for myself and the church that I pastor. But we are none of the pejoratives that the author claims, none of them. Nor do I know of a single conservative Christian church that looks like the group that he's painting here. Having said that, I, I will say this. If I believe that truth is real, that there's an objective right and wrong, and that what one believes determines where she or he will spend eternity, it would be the height of hypocrisy to not seek to lovingly persuade people to embrace that truth. Since God gives people free will and the power to choose, I must honor their choices while disagreeing when they choose a path that leads to ruin. Since God doesn't force people, I can't either. I will respect their choice while seeking to persuade them what I believe is true. To not do so would be hypocrisy. Reading between the lines, it seems that the author evaluates my attempt to persuade him as being controlling and coercive. Those are the words he uses. Apparently, he can insult me as a narrow-minded, judgmental bigot while remaining free of that label himself because he's progressive and I'm conservative. Convenient. Okay, we're going to wrap this up next time in part five.